नमस्कार वेलकम टू दी सेवेंथ एपिसोड ऑफ सत्य संवाद भारत अ कंट्री ऑफ डाइवर्स लैंडस्केप एंड पीपल इज कमिंग इन टू इट्स ओन it however faces a multifaceted challenge as it grapples with climate change induced water scarcity energy demands and food security concerns in recent years various regions across the country have reported significant drops in crop yields due to hotter temperatures uneven monsoon increased pests and fungi punjab for instance accounts for more than 10% food grains nationally However it is projected to see a decline of up to 13% in major kharif and rabi crops by 2050 due to environmental changes maize is projected to have the greatest decline being the most responsive to variations in rainfall and temperature cotton yields will also decline by about 11% while potato and wheat will fall by 5% in this period these prospects have not only affected local incomes but have also el- led to elevated food prices in bharat the paradox of food insecurity persists despite agricultural abundance the modi government has brought about critical changes such as the health tracker as per who standards under the pradhan mantri poshan shakti nirman as well as the pradhan mantri garib kalyan anna yojana to provide free food grains to antyodaya anna yojana and primary household beneficiaries even within agriculture there have been revolutionary changes such as the lab to land scheme for the transference of technological innovations to farmers on the ground har khet ko pani initiative and per drop more crop scheme and yet there is always scope for doing more we as a rashtra must ensure optimum multidimensional usage of agricultural resources particularly land and water One of the major concerns in this regard is climatic variability. March 2024 22 was reported as the hottest in the previous 122 years with severe heat waves impacting crops and food production. Rabi crops were affected the most. The output for wheat for instance went down by 10 to 15%. The effect was so severe that government reduced exports for maintaining the domestic availability within the country. Scientifically speaking, excessive solar radiation on crops have led to chromosomal aberrations, reduced seed germinations and direct burn damage to exposed tissues. Chlorophyll and carotenoids in the crops may be adversely affected by large amounts of ultraviolet UVB radiation that have a wavelength of about 280 to 320 nanometers. transpiration which is the process of water movement through a plant and its evaporation from aerial paths such as the leaves stems and flowers leads to problems especially in areas with water scarcity interestingly in 2022 itself heavy rainfall in the later part of the year damaged key summer cro- uh, summer sown crops in many parts of india these crops included the rice uh, output or the yield soybean cotton pulses and vegetables These weather fluctuations swinging between excessive sunshine and incessant rain have caused significant losses to crops across the country. When it comes to Bharat, another major point of concern has been energy security. Over the past decade, India has successfully reduced fossil fuel subsidies by 59% since 2014, a feat that many other large economies have struggled to accomplish. However, the energy crisis of 2022 coupled with india's increasing energy demands has prompted the country to take measures that could reverse this progress in response to soaring fossil fuel prices in 2022-23 bharat implemented measures such as capping the retail prices of petrol diesel and domestic liquefied petroleum gas the lpg reducing taxes providing direct financial assistance to businessmen and consumers and bolstering the existing energy supplies These actions were taken to safeguard low income households mirroring efforts seen in other nations facing similar challenges. India is aiming to elevate its economy to a USD 5 trillion mark within the next 3 years up from its current standing at USD 3.7 trillion as of the fiscal year 2024. Alongside this ambitious economic goal the country is taking significant strides to disconnect this growth from greenhouse emissions. In the union budget 2023-24 the government outlined a strategy to achieve economic expansion ensure energy access and security and most importantly 
pursue decarbonization through what it terms as green growth. To support this agenda, the government allocated 35,000 crore rupees for priority capital investments geared towards facilitating the energy transition and realizing net zero carbon objectives. India has successfully managed to navigate through one of the most challenging energy crises in recent history, akin to the 1973 oil crisis. This achievement can be attributed to India's comprehensive energy security strategy, which encompasses four key elements. Firstly, the country has prioritized diversifying its energy supplies to re reduce the dependency on any single resource or source. Secondly, India has focused on expanding its exploration and production activities to bolster the domestic energy production. Thirdly, the nation has embraced alternative energy sources such as renewable energy to supplement the traditional energy sources. And lastly, India is steering towards meeting its energy transition goals through initiatives like promoting a gas-based economy, investing in green hydrogen technology, and encouraging the adoption of electric vehicles. But what is most encouraging is the drive for solar energy. Bharat averages between three to five peak sun hours in most areas. An hour in the morning that receives an average of 500 watt per meter square of sunlight is equal to 0.5 peak sun hours. An hour at midday that receives an average of 1,100 watt per meter square of sunlight is equal to 1.1 peak sun hours. With such a huge landmass and an average of 300 sunny days a year, India theoretically provides 5 trillion kilowatt hours of clean and renewable solar power available every year across its length and breadth, enough to uh, electrify the nation dozens of times over. The National Institute of Solar Energy has assessed that the country's solar potential is about 748 gigawatts, assuming 3% of the wasteland area to be covered by solar, solar PV modules. The good part is that in fiscal year 2023, Bharat ramped up the subsidies for renewable energy, which were 14,843 rupee, uh, crore rupees in the fiscal year 2023, which was an 8% increase over fiscal year 2022. The key measures were direct budgetary spending through several central uh, sector schemes being implemented by the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, such as solar parks, ultra me mega solar uh, power project schemes, central PSUs, uh, PM Kusum and the Rooftop Solar Program. Most of these schemes were to end by March 2024. However, due to multiple issues, most particularly land availability, the government has decided to extend these schemes till March of 2026, with no financial implication since current budgets remain underspent. So what if I were to say that there is a solution to the problem of weather fluctuations affecting our crops, and the underutilization of Bharat's solar potential, and that this can be one and the same? What if there is a way to address the food security and energy security concerns of Bharat with one stroke? In fact, there is, and it is called agri-voltaics. Inspired by the success of the Central Arid Zone Research Institute, the CAZRI project in Jodhpur and Bhuj, the farmers of Sitapur in Uttar Pradesh under the able leadership of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath and Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi, have recently decided to explore the promising solution called agrivoltaics. The innovative approach is based on the construction of solar panels in agricultural land, offering shade and protection from rain to crops, as well as generating extra solar energy to support the farming operations, as well as miscellaneous energy requirements. Agrivoltaics is a novel concept that seeks to address the challenges posed by climate change and water scarcity in agriculture. By integrating solar panels into agricultural land, this approach provides shade to crops, reducing water loss due to transpiration. Moreover, the surplus solar energy generated can be harnessed to power essential agricultural equipment and lighting, further enhancing the productivity and resilience of farming communities. The implementation of agrivoltaics in Sitapur began in early 2021, with local farmers creating small-scale systems using savings from rural government subsidies. Sustenance farmers in Sitapur have witnessed firsthand the benefits of this approach when wheat crops were cultivated in the shade of solar panels. 
not only has the farms experienced more than a 40% increase in land productivity in arid conditions, but the solar panels also generated enough electricity to power three night lamps in a single farm unit, contributing to energy sustainability on the farms. The increasing frequency of heavy rains coupled with the longer dry spells have disrupted the reliability of rainfall, leading to a significant decline in soil moisture. This volatile climate poses a significant threat to food security in India, while malnourishment in children uh, across the three categories of stunting, wasting and underweight under five years reduced as per the NHFS 5 uh, survey of 2019-21 from 38.4% to 35.5%. 21.0% to 19.3% and 35.8% to 32.1% respectively across the different categories as compared to the NHFS uh, 4 survey in 2015-16, there is still a lot more work that needs to be done. On the other hand, around 50 gigawatts of India's installed solar capacity consists of ground-mounted photovoltaic systems. Finding land lots for major solar projects is getting harder by the day, according to the recent trends. And to meet the 450 gigawatts renewable energy target for 2030, creative and practical solutions are required. India has an estimated 2.8 terawatts of agri-PV potential, according to early estimations by industry experts, demonstrating the broad application of this technology. Currently, a few solar parks have put into operation on arid terrain this technology that was leased from the farmers. Over 1,800 farmers have agreed to a 28-year lease on roughly 13,000 acres in Pavagara Solar Park, uh, which has a generation of more than 2 gigawatts um, in Karnataka. Moreover, India has set an ambitious net zero carbon target for 2070, uh, making sustainable practices like agrivoltaics crucial to achieving these goals. The success of agrivoltaics is exemplified by the CAZRI pilot project in Jodhpur and Bhuj, which reported a 41% increase in land productivity in arid regions. The initiative has gained momentum and is being replicated in northern states, such as in Delhi, uh, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, as well as in Bihar. However, for widespread adoption, substantial financial and technical support is still needed. The government is looking towards scaling up agrivoltaics and making it accessible to everyone. A farmer or farmer producer organization must have an inherent stake in an agri-PV project, as I see it. The success of the business depends on this. Farmers can invest in agri-PV uh, systems similar to the component A of the PM Kusum plan. Power can be sold thereafter to a distribution firm such as a discom at a set price. In Bharat, agrivoltaic installations typically range from 3 kilowatt peak to 3 uh, megawatt peak, with no utility scale projects exceeding the 3 megawatt peak to date. As a result, there is a limited practical experience in assessing their technical, economic and agricultural viability. Notable government-backed agrivoltaic farms, including the 1 megawatt uh, installations such as the GSE cells, uh, GSE cells rather, uh, Harsh Ab Abacus plant in Gujarat, the GIP cells facility in Amrol and Vastan in Gujarat, as well as the 110 kilowatt project at Krishi Vigyan Kendra, the NHRDF in Delhi. These one megawatt pilot projects reflect the Indian government's commitment to exploring the agrivoltaics potential. Uh, effective coordination, however, between the solar project uh, generation and the crop cultivation, as demonstrated in GIPCL's Amrol plant, offers valuable lessons that must be carried forward for future initiatives. One of the key advantages of agrivoltaics is its potential to enhance the water efficacy and efficiency of usage in uh, agricultural practices. The water used for cleaning solar panels can be recycled to irrigate the crops growing beneath the solar panel area. Recently, there have been mobile uh, agrivoltaic technologies as well as translucent panels that can selectively allow certain kinds of light to pass through. Furthermore, prototypes with integrated water harvesting systems are under development, offering the potential for even greater water conservation in the future. Despite its promise, agrivoltaics do present certain challenges that must be addressed for successful implementation. These challenges include shading on cultivable land and microclimatic impacts on the crop growth, 
to overcome these obstacles, crop profiling and shadow analysis are essential for optimizing the agrivoltaic systems. Agrivoltaics can, in general, be classified into open and closed systems. Open agrivoltaics include interspace PV and overhead PV, while closed ones involve greenhouse structures. To facilitate the adoption of agrivoltaics, several interventions have been recommended, including the preparation of detailed project reports, uh, helplines for crop-related queries in agrivoltaic systems, awareness campaigns that are conducted by government agencies, development of project design tools, local support and guidance through the government agencies, procurement-based incentives, accessible loans through financial institutions specifically for agrivoltaics, procurement-based guidance through agricultural research organizations, and feasibility assessment as well. The feasibility of agrivoltaic projects can be determined through various criteria, including agricultural revenue, farmer commitments to leasing arrangements, willingness to adapt the crops for agrivoltaics, assessing site conditions and having feedback mechanisms, agroclimatic regions, as well as the availability of evacuation infrastructure. Agrivoltaics represent a sustainable solution that address multiple challenges facing India, including the water scarcity problem, energy demands, and food security. By combining the solar panels with agriculture, agrivoltaics not only enhance the crop yield and water efficiency, but also contribute to India's renewable energy targets and net zero carbon goals. You may ask that solar panels, as in uh, popular understanding, can be expensive. Yes, indeed, but there are ongoing projects within the scientific community in India that look at uh, reducing the costs of solar panel ge generation, deployment and usage. There has also been work on how to reduce uh, the impact of uh, sedimentation or of various kinds of uh, pollutants that can settle on the solar panels and how that can be removed for more effective and efficient operation as we go along on this goal of deploying agrivoltaics in Bharat. As Bharat faces an increasing demand for energy and water resources, I believe that agrivoltaics can be a very significant solution or at least an effective manner of thinking about how to have a multi-pronged a multi-dimensional and comprehensive strategy for looking at addressing the food security and energy security problem of the country. The Modi government is undertaking initiatives and deliberations as we speak to ensure that the formulations and implementation of agrivoltaic technology on a mass scale is successfully realized. In our bid to ensure food and energy security, this nuanced approach that the Indian government has embarked upon is truly commendable in moving towards a Vikasid Bharat by 2047. Thank you for joining us for today's Satya Samvad, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Namaskar. <laughs>